Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to take a little bit of a look at Viker Vault. You see, ladies and gentlemen, that Viker Vault deck that I always loved, that I was always a huge, gigantic fan of, that never ended up being particularly good or great or viable or reliable, might have just gotten awesome. And this makes me rather delighted indeed. Now, quick, quick sadness at the beginning. Remember the Vikavolt from Sun and Moon that accelerates grass and lightning energy from your deck has rotated out. Boo hiss, etc. But we've still got the great one from Unbroken Bonds. And at this stage, I do need to give a massive shout out to the lovely Talonite X over on Twitter, who has gone and been nice enough to, well, send this deck list to me. To hit me up on Twitter and go, hey, Wossy, you like Vikavolt? You might like this list. Yes, I do. This makes me rather happy indeed. And I should mention that this Vikavolt has also come out as a promo, if that's what you're into. Now, 150 HP on a Stage 2 is normal, and the ability, if there is any Stadium card in play, this Pokemon has no weakness, is kind of underwhelming. I mean, yeah, Fighting Decks are, are alright, and with more Pico V running around, they're only going to get better, but it's still not a reason to play the card. And even the attack isn't particularly amazing. Like, it's not a bad attack, it's just not great. It's for 4 energy, which is expensive, 120 damage, you may discard all lightning energy from this Pokemon. If you do, you do 220. And okay, 220 for 4 energy is fine, but you need to keep discarding all of the energy. And with lightning Pokemon at the moment, the general rule is we use Thunder Mountain Prism Star and Tapu Koko Prism Star to accelerate 1 energy while reducing our attack cost by 1, and then stuff like Pikachu and Zekrom or Tapu Koko V can go attacking quite nicely. That's not going to work here. Well, we need to remember that there is a Charger Bug here, and the Charger Bug is absolutely phenomenal. You see, the Charger Bug can be attached from your hand to Vikavolt. I mean, it can also be attached to Vikavolt GX, but quick heads up, Vikavolt GX also rotated. And it is two Lightning Energy. So now you attach your Charger Bug to your Vikavolt, it counts as two Lightning Energy, and now we actually do have everything we need to get all of our energy on. And that's what the deck is built around. I've got two deck lists to show you here. And they don't play much energy whatsoever. I'll go through the energy lines in a moment, but we really don't play very much energy. We play Charger Bug. The thing is, we've actually got great options now for getting our Charger Bug out. And so this deck is more consistent than it's been in a very long time. We'll get to those in a minute. There are other Pokemon we play here. And the one that is really consistent... Between both of the decks, actually to be fair, they're very similar deck lists. But the one which we absolutely need here is Inteleon. And I know I'm mentioning Inteleon quite a bit at the moment. And all I can tell you is that Inteleon is phenomenal and this isn't going to stop. When you evolve into Inteleon, you get to search your deck for two trainer cards and put them into your hand. And then we've got the Drizzile that's got the same ability, but it's a stage one, not a stage two. And you search for one trainer card rather than two. It's kind of lovely. And this gives you great consistency. I mean, if nothing else, you can search out your rare candy so that you can skip your whole evolution stage. And of course, we've now got Evolution Incense, which lets you search for any evolved Pokemon out of your deck. So you can now evolve up into Inteleon, grab your rare candy and an Evolution Incense, and oh, look... Now you're rolling, or you evolve into Drizzile and get the one you don't need, because the other one is already in your hand. Now the other thing which we do see across both lists here, which is really kind of cool, is Weezing. The Weezing that came out in Cosmic Eclipse. The one whereby if it is discarded from your hand using Roxy, you put one damage counter on each of your opponent's Pokemon. And then Roxy, for her part, you get to discard two Pokemon from your hand, and for each one you discard, you draw three cards. 
Now, firstly in this deck, as we're going to see in a moment, we're playing lots of ways to search out our evolution. Pokemon, you don't want coughing. Sorry, just a quick side note. Don't play coughing. Coughing you can start with, and also what we're relying on here is, hey, look at all these evolution Pokemon I can search out really easily. It's not quite the same. And coughing will work, but you can start with it. We don't really want it, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm honest with you. So we tend to play Weezing and Roxy, and the other thing is, it's just for the damage. It's just to make sure that you can actually hit those numbers. You're hitting 120, or 220 if you discard all your energy, but wouldn't it be lovely if you were just constantly getting KOs without having to discard your energy, or getting one-hit KOs on bigger Pokemon? That's where this comes in. It's just dropping extra damage to make sure that you can hit the numbers. Now, both decks do play Oracorio here, and they play Dedene. It's just consistency. Dedene, discard your hand, draw six cards. Oracorio, if you had a Pokemon KO'd in the previous turn, draw three cards. And do remember that this is a single prize deck, so your opponent will be taking more KOs in order to win the game. And if they're taking more KOs in order to win the game, that gives you more opportunities to use Oracorio's ability. And it is also worth mentioning that they both play Marshadow. It's alright against Ultra Beast, but it's mostly here to just get rid of your opponent's stadium if they've got a stadium on which they're relying because you don't want it. The other thing to notice here is that because this deck doesn't have a huge amount of room, two stage two lines, we're not playing any stadiums. So we need something like a Marshadow here to make sure that your opponent doesn't drop something like... Heat Factory Prism Star or Wondrous Labyrinth Prism Star and actually have it for the entire game. That would be a little bit unfair. We're cool if they drop a Thunder Mountain, that helps us. But outside of that, no. We, we want to make sure it goes away. And we can always recover it if we need to. And one of the decks does actually play a single copy of the new Galarian Zigzagoon. When you play it down, you get to drop one damage counter somewhere on the field. It's cool. It's an extra damage. And it's here for the same reason that Weezing is here. We're trying to hit the numbers. Now, in terms of energy, we're not in agreement over the two deck lists here. Both of them play a couple copies of Water Energy, and this is for Inteleon. Because Inteleon's attack is actually quite good. 120 to the active, 20 to one of your opponent's bench. And again, we're playing the spreading game here. We're hitting damage to the bench. So, this just helps. Also, it means you're hitting another weakness, which is very nice indeed. But that's where they differ. One of the lists plays a copy of Recycle Energy, which is actually really good for Inteleon, because Inteleon is a water and a colorless. This provides a colorless, but will bounce back to your hand when it is discarded. The other deck plays Super Boost Energy. And I'll be honest with you, I don't imagine playing this deck without Super Boost Energy. It's four energy, or to put it another way, it is one energy card that allows you to just instantly pay the attack cost. It It's amazing. So I, I wouldn't play the deck without it personally, but that's just me. Now, in terms of trainer cards here, we're not going to go exhaustively through every single trainer card, but there are a few that do need pointing out. The deck liberally plays Electro Power, as in you should be looking to play four copies of Electro Power. We're not playing much energy here. And although we are playing Fishing Rod... Fishing Rod will only recover to Charger Bug. Although, to be fair, we have something else. We'll get there in a minute. But the point is, we're not going to be able to constantly recover Charger Bug. So being able to take big KOs without discarding the Charger Bug, or taking giant KOs on tag teams for free prizes with the Charger Bug, whichever way round you're doing it, you're going to be reducing the need to recover Charger Bug, and that can be pretty gosh darn huge. As well as Evolution Incense, we're also playing Quick Ball here, because it's great for searching out your basics. Expect to see it in a huge amount of decks moving forward. But we're also, and if anyone has been listening to my ramblings about this deck in the past, you should know this, we're going to be playing Lure Ball. Lure Ball lets you flip three coins, and for each head, you get to grab an Evolution Pokemon from your discard pile and put it into your hand. And given that we've got Weezing, remember I said coughing was not as good here, which can do extra damage, and we got Charger Bug, which is basically 90% of our energy, Lure Ball becomes absolutely huge in this deck. Although it is worth pointing out that they do both play three copies of Great Ball, 
Yeah, that's back. It's just good for searching out your Pokemon. And one of the lists does also play Netball, which searches out your basic grass Pokemon. Bearing in mind, of course, it's only one copy to be fair. But bearing in mind that Charger Bug is a basic grass Pokemon, so that's going to help out rather nicely indeed. The other really vital card here is Professor Round's Lecture, so that you can get all of your basic Pokemon out nice and early. This is a deck that didn't used to be good enough, that didn't used to be consistent enough. But with our new Pokemon search options, Quick Ball and Evolution Incense, combined with Inteleon for helping us search out our trainer cards, we've suddenly locked into a situation where, yeah, Vikavolt is good enough, Vikavolt is consistent enough, and it does win. Now, the first list has been up on the screen for a little while here. This is the list. I mean, they're both very similar. This one... I mean, you can see it's just built with lots of Electro Power, lots of Pokemon Search. You've got Roxy and Weezing, and then you've got Vikavolt and Inteleon. The second list is very similar. You do see the Galarian Zigzagoon here, and this is a list with your Super Boost Energy, and honestly, I wouldn't play the deck without it. But outside of that, they're really very similar. One plays Galarian, Zigzagoon, and Super Boost Energy. The other one plays Recycle Energy. There we go. That's about it. Right. I love this. I want this deck to be good again. I can't promise it will be, but I can promise you I am absolutely going to be testing it. For now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to know what you think about this deck. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassy plays where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have pokemon in but are still pretty gosh darn awesome but by far the most important thing as always Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.